Okay, so I have the three keys are already installed and this is a little bit of a sort of balancing act because I kind of need to get most of them going at the same time because I need to get the chain on there and the sprockets all at the same time. So the flange on the single sprocket goes on the infeed roller and the extended portion of that flange goes away from the machine. So this chain is on the back side. The double row sprocket goes with the extended portion towards the machine because that matches with that sprocket so that those two will get lined up. So that goes in here like so. And then the small gear goes on the output of the gearbox reduction and that goes with the flange towards the machine. And as such, that chain goes on the outside. The truly fun part <laughs> begins. And I think I'm actually going to install the small one first. So that goes down there. Since that one really doesn't like to move, um, I mean, it kind of moves based on the uh, gearbox, but it doesn't move quite as easily as these ones. So that's what I'm going to do on that one. So I need to get that one on there. Let's see if I can get this one up here. Down there. Down there. Down there. That was really cool. And okay, so this one is a little bit tighter of a fit, but if you're going to do this, I strongly recommend that you put your hand on the other side where that uh, outfeed roller comes out on the other side. So you can see I can push it back out just to keep some of that force off the springs that are otherwise holding it in place. And then we can tighten these down. So these are just some oversized washers and I think these ones were M6 bolts. And on my machine, so on this one, I do not have a chain tensioner. So I know some of the later model versions of this machine and like the later models of the Delta equivalent actually came with spring, um, spring loaded uh, belt, no, chain tensioners that would kind of just hold this down. So that way you had uh, tension on this chain so that it wasn't flopping all over the place. But, uh, well, I don't have it. <laughs> so there was part of me, basically you end up with like two screw holes somewhere up here that I could, you know, technically have drilled and tapped myself and bought a, bought a uh, tensioning sprocket from probably Grizzly. I think they use them, but I don't know. I kind of thought if it didn't have it originally, then I'll probably just try it without and see what happens. If I decide I somehow need to add a sprocket there for tensioning, I can probably get that figured out pretty easily. And it shouldn't, it wouldn't be that bad because there's just one cover that you take off and this end is pretty well exposed. It's the other side that would be way more obnoxious. Alrighty. So we can see that sprocket down on the bottom turning and now we are turning in feed and out feed. Sweet. Good news. That random bolt that I found that I heard just fall out of the machine when I was taking some other stuff apart, I figured out what it is. It holds the cover for the chain drive in place. So that's good. That's uh, one less mystery to try and figure out. And Spare bolts. Well, spare bolts are okay. Extras afterwards. A little dicey. Okay. So this is the cover that covers up the chain drive mechanism 
and on my machine there were these two kind of spots that were cast into this cover that were not drilled and tapped originally uh, however I know that future iterations of this machine and or Grizzly machines that have this same cover had little plates that kind of cover so there's an open section right here on the back side of the cover so kind of like this little triangle shape here from the cover that they cover up just to keep some of the chips out of here because this was kind of had a decent amount of sawdust on it um, but this machine and I think even the early deltas did not come with that so what I did is I actually bought they're super cheap they're like a dollar a piece I bought the Grizzly versions and the holes don't line up and the ones in here are threaded so there was a threaded hole there and there and then this one was actually originally threaded but I just drilled out some holes for what lined up with that drilled and tapped the cover so now these pieces will basically go in here attach to the cover behind this and act as a way to deflect any of the chips that try to come in from that side but I'm going to install the cover first and there's two of these roll pins so I took them out when I painted and put them back in but there's two of them one there one here and there's two locating holes in the top of the casting and that's to help hold that in place where it's supposed to be and then there's one bolt that goes through the middle that actually keeps that in place here's my there's my allen screw all right so that is more or less the gearbox and drivetrain on this end done so to kind of round out this end, I'm going to reattach the pivoting handle to the lifting wheel. So this drives the post lift mechanism. So this drives this screw that's connected by all those chains underneath, or that chain, I guess, underneath, and raises and lowers everything all at once. So there's that, this handle, and then there's this little up down kind of a label i guess if you will on there and i there was like a clear sticker over it and i actually peeled that off and then i actually just shot it with some clear coat so that looks a whole lot better than it used to and i do need to get a new nut for this one i I don't have one. I thought I did, but I don't have one that actually fits on this end of the shaft. So I will get one of those at some point. So that'll be on my list of things. A new washer and a new nut just to make it look good. Because why would I want to come this far just to put a crappy, <laughs> crappy nut on the top of it? So I got to try and figure out what I'm going to do. There's a little metal piece here and that's just the indicator that goes down on the top of here so that kind of goes right there and it's just a way to indicate what your actual depth is on oh that's fun <laughs> what your actual depth is on the uh, depth of cut scale so uh, I do have two drive screws that'll go there I just have to figure out if I'm either going to paint it, make a new one, or just put that one back on it, see see what I end up doing there. But I may end up having to take this off to get to those, but we'll see if I can just drop it all the way down. <laughs> 